Hello, welcome and a very good evening. And tonight we have something very special, namely this tiny little 386 SX board. Um, it's so-called baby AT size. Uh, it has all the uh, typical holes that the AT style motherboards have. And as you can tell from the color, it is purple, so it is basically a homebrew board, but um, it's a clone of the PC chips M396, I think. That's at least what it says here on the uh, thing. And it also says here up in the, in the corner that it's a replica. Um, why does this exist? One user on the DOS Reloaded forums uh, had one of these boards. But I think, if I remember correctly, it was broken, um, probably due to a leaked battery or something. So what did he do? He reverse engineered the whole thing, uh, drew all the traces in KeyCut or Eagle or whatever, I don't know what kind of software he used. And yeah, um, basically came up with this design. And this is the board, and uh, we're gonna test drive it and see if it works. So. Here we're gonna install the main board and just as a comparison, here you can see why it's called a baby AT main board. This here is like a full size AT main board. And the width is roughly the same. Uh, there's not much uh, that is dissimilar between the regular size and the baby. I think there were some bigger uh, AT main boards maybe from the original PC AT that could extend up to here. Uh, huge. I think I have a clone of that um, back in the storage, but uh, yeah, this is what I'm currently using. It's a 486 uh, one with a uh, MR BIOS, uh, which is pretty nice, and also uh, can be upgraded up to 16 megabytes of RAM easily. I only have eight in here because it doesn't make much sense, and also uh, the PS2 uh, slots here. Oh no, I think these are also SIM slots. Not quite sure. Could be PS2. Um, but anyway, these two slots over here, they collide with the cards here. And I like to put the Snark Barker in here, which is a bit longer. So eight megabytes it is, which is fine. So we have the Snark Barker, which we will test, the Gravis Ultrasound Ace, the PC MIDI card to see if uh, Roland devices will work. We will have a VGA graphics card this year, so I think in Trident, 9800. Um, here on this slot uh, we have a compact flash as a hard disk replacement and a multi-IO card uh, controlling all that. The MR BIOS doesn't need anything else. Uh, it can work with this compact flash card easily. I'm not sure what the BIOS of um, our little tiny mainboard here will do with this. We might have to put in an XTID BIOS to make it work with the one gigabyte flash, but perhaps that's not possible. So I'm gonna rip all the cards out, uh, take the uh, whole main board out and then put the new one in just to have a proper setup. I could just put it all on the table, but it's I think it's um, safer if I put it all in my case here, which is a standard um, ATX case, by the way, with uh, all the nice things and fans that usually come with that. There's an external battery that I installed for the uh, old style main boards, basically. And one more thing I have to uh, pull over here a little bit. Um, this device in the, in the edge here is the Magic ATX to AT power converter. And um, it's for, because I'm using a lot of homebrew cards, where sometimes I have solder problems and issues, it protects the whole machine against short circuits and it limits, it's a current limiting device basically, so that nothing burns up, which is a very nice thing indeed. I have a video about that, I might put a link up here in the video description. So check that out if you're interested in this device. It saved me quite a lot of um, yeah nerves. I already had one or two main boards that are fried because of problems with hardware that I built. Um, yeah, because sometimes you do make mistakes or sometimes capacitors blow up and stuff like that. So let's get to uh, the changing of the main board.
So we're ready to boot it up for the first time. I only plugged in the battery to be able to save the settings, the um, VGA card over there and uh, power and a keyboard. So we can uh, access the, uh, what, what do you call it, the, the BIOS, basically nothing else. Um, I will actually remove this to not short out anything. Uh, which is probably a good idea and unplug the controller no the, the socket for the compact flash card like this um all right anyway um one problem that i noticed is that the mounting holes don't line up with uh, the ones in my case and i think my case is actually pretty atx at compatible so there might be an issue. I have to ask the author if he measured anything there. Also, I had to put some captain tape under here because there is a metal standoff thingy that I think is used on my 486 board and I can't remove it easily from the case, but it's not used here. So I put captain tape on it so it doesn't short out the capacitor here. Um, should be fine for the time being, but I wouldn't leave it like this. So yeah, there's definitely some weird issues going on with the mounting of this thing. But yeah, I will report in probably a comment or uh, the video description what that is all about. Now we're trying to fire it up and hopefully the device here will not trigger. We should be safe, it should not blow up, but let's see. And contrary to what I was fearing, the board actually booted up on first try. And of course, first of all, the CMOS settings were broken, so I went and set up everything, like the hard disk and the floppy drives. However, the hard disk wouldn't work because I was using a 1GB compact flash card, and these old BIOSes support usually only hard disks up to roughly 504MB. So that was a problem. But uh, yeah, no despair, I actually used the XT ID compact flash adapter, which comes with its own BIOS, which supports larger hard disks. So the one gigabyte wasn't a problem. So after a quick setup, we ran a couple of benchmarks, for example, the Superscape benchmark here, which is a very old 3D VGA benchmark. And then the troubles began. The Snarkbucker wouldn't work except in adlib mode. Whenever I wanted to play anything using digital samples, the machine would either reboot or hang. And after a couple of minutes, the compact flash card had some uh, errors. There were broken files everywhere. Uh, programs would stop loading. And I figured out that something was wrong either with the compact flash card or with this controller or something. So I opted to go another road. I would remove the XTID controller and take a smaller flash card. I had a 256 megabyte one lying around. So I formatted it and installed a fresh copy of MS-DOS 5.0. That was done pretty quickly and after the usual round of Gorilla Bass, which uh, is obviously mandatory with MS-DOS 5.0, we actually could run any software that we liked that was using the Snarkbarker or any other system that uh, basically used IRQs and DMAs. Uh, so here is an example of Modmaster XT playing a DJ Hoffman song. And it's working just fine at 44 kHz with this Snark Parker. So in the following I threw everything I got at this uh, board and the sound cards. For example, Pinball Fantasies, which also uses a lot of hardware tricks for the sound for the VGA card but it ran without any flaws very smoothly. Also, I tested out the Gravis Ultrasound Ace, which was performing evenly well. Um, I think it doesn't even use the IRQ and DMA necessarily, so that was no surprise. Also, I ran a couple of demos. Here is Panic from Future Crew, which runs pretty nicely, although a bit slow. It's more for the 486s. The same goes for Second Reality. This part here is still relatively fast, but 
the 386 SX is a tad bit slow for this stuff. Also we tried out a combination of Sound Blaster and Roland MT32. Uh, for example here is Day of the Tentacle and uh, this would use uh, two different I.O. ports and possibly also another IRQ. I'm not sure if the PC MIDI IRQ is used here. But that was no problem either. So I think it's safe to say that uh, the board actually supports almost any of the hardware that I have. Uh, maybe there's some exotic hardware that won't run, but I don't have it. I could imagine that some bus mastering cards would be interesting, like SCSI controllers. But those I don't have, so I can't test them right now. But all the sound cards and uh, the multi-IO controller and PGA card runs just fine. So that's almost all there is to say at the moment about the uh, clone of the M396F Baby AT 386SX mainboard. What do you think of it? Um, I think it's a very neat, very tiny, compact little device and um, I mean you can probably still get a lot of similar mainboards on eBay and this will most probably be more expensive if you build it on your own. It is however pretty amazing that uh, this thing exists at all, that someone reverse engineered it because his version was damaged by battery leakage. So he said, okay, let's just reverse engineer it and he salvaged all the chips from it and implanted it on this one here. And it's actually pretty amazing. There's only one little CPU uh, the main chipset and these are just the standard chips that you have on every main board from that era. So yeah, um, I like it very much. It's uh, only drawbacks are that it doesn't fit properly into my ATX case. The uh, screw holes or mounting holes are slightly different, but I think maybe this is from an era where the AT standard wasn't really a standard, but maybe everybody was doing their own thing. Um, the author told me that he wants to adjust the mounting points a little bit so that it will work with most cases. So let's see for the next revision. This thing already works pretty well. Um, I'm not sure what's up with the Compact Flash IDE adapter. That might have been due to the case that it's actually made for XTs and there might have been some, I don't know, 16-bit versus 8-bit bus things going on or maybe conflict with my multi-IO card, not entirely sure, but I think um, you can get around that. I will mm, perhaps make a follow-up video regarding solutions um, for bigger compact flash uh, sizes. As I said, up to 504 megabytes should be fine, but it's hard to find those small compact flash cartridges or hard disks that are small and still work, so that might be an issue. But uh, other than that, this is actually pretty neat. You can also use an XDIDE BIOS on like a network card that you put in there. You don't need to use the compact flash 8-bit controller. You could use the multi-IO card and somewhere else put uh, with the ROM. So I think it's not that big of a deal. Um, so I can definitely recommend it if you want to build your own PC from parts that you sold it yourself. The whole project is up on GitHub. Um, I'll put a link to it in the video description. There's also uh, discussions happening on, I think, Vogons, but definitely on DOS Reloaded. Uh, so if you search for the project, you will find it. You will find the author. And it's a pretty neat thing. I knew about the um, XT clone projects from, for example, Sergei Kislev uh, with a micro uh, 8088 and stuff like that. But this here is a different leak. This is a 386 board. You can still get the chipset on uh, UT source and similar vendors. So basically you can probably build this relatively easily. Um, and I think it's a nice uh, project to do, albeit not a very cheap one, I guess. So I'll be sending this back to the author and uh, it was a lot of fun to test it out with a bunch of cards. And yeah, it works just fine. So that's it for today. 
share, like, and subscribe as usual. If you want to support me, links are down in the video description. And other than that, see you next time.